So would I grow this mix again? Probably so. Is it absolutely perfect for what we're trying to do here? Probably not. What's up Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. It is Wednesday, December 7th here in South Georgia. Kind of a foggy morning here, but supposed to warm up later today. Got up to about 80 yesterday, supposed to get to around 78, 79 today. So it doesn't feel like fall, but the warmer weather has things growing real fast around here, which is always nice to see. So on today's video, I wanna focus on the plots where we're not growing vegetables right now, but we're more focused on building our soils with a lot of different cover crop mixes and stuff. I wanna take you around, show you those different plots, show you how they're doing, talk about some things I've learned so far this year and what I might change going forward. Now I certainly love seeing plots like this that are full of good groceries, but I also just really, really enjoy seeing plots of nice lush green cover crops this time of year when the grass is dormant or almost dormant. Not a lot of green out here except the vegetables we have growing. So just walking out here and seeing these lush, dense, thick cover crops just makes me smile, makes me happy, thinks about all the good things we're doing for our soil. So let's start out right here where we have our chicken tractor currently. This is a plot that we planted uh, probably about two months ago now. Planted a mix called the overwintering mix from green cover seed. Has lots of good stuff in it. Rye, barley, clover, vetch, peas, and rapeseed. And the chickens are working through this. You can see they're almost to the end over there. Just moving them every day. And what I've liked about this mix so far as it seems to be holding up to grazing really well. You can see this is where the chickens have been and got a few little wore out patches in there, but for the most part, it still looks pretty lush, nice and green, which tells me we can run them over this plot several times before they wear it out. Now, another interesting thing we can see here is kind of the progression of the recovery after grazing. So they've made three lanes and this plot here so far so this lane here was what they were on just a few days ago it takes them about four days to complete a lane in one of these plots this lane here was grazed before that one and then this was the first lane that was grazed so you can see kind of the progression of the recovery looks a little beat down right there but just a week or two later recovers and it's nice and green and lush again now one of the things I've noticed with this particular mix is that the chickens do prefer some things in this mix over other things. They seem to really like the rapeseed in there, the peas, a little more than they like the rye and the barley. Now they're eating it all, but they'll take out the rapeseed and the pea plants on a spot before they really start munching on the rye and barley. And we can kind of see that here when we compare this area that hasn't been grazed versus that over there that has been grazed. So in here we can see a lot of the different components of the mix. Over here it kind of just looks like rye and barley. So when I move them every day I've been just kind of washing them for five or ten minutes or so and the first thing they'll start seeking out and eating is this rapeseed right here which kind of looks like mustard or kale. Then they'll go to the peas and veg and other stuff and then they'll start working on the rye and barley. Now from the looks of this that's been grazed, does it look like they're eating the rye and barley much? They are eating it some, just not as much as this other stuff in here. Now I do think it's really important to have the rye and barley, those type of grain cover crops in a mix like this because they provide such a nice dense cover over the ground there for weed suppression, erosion control, things like that. And they tend to grow back pretty well got a nice dense root mat on the soil there too but I think this mix may have just a little bit too much rye and barley in it for what we're trying to do here I wish it had more of the rapeseed more clover more of the peas in it so I like the mix don't get me wrong but I wish the proportions of the different components were slightly different now the other thing I've learned is that I probably put the chickens on this plot a little too soon. Yes, it looked nice and lush and green, but over here on this end where they haven't grazed yet, some of those other components have had 
a better chance to thrive. We see a lot more growth with the peas and the vetch and the rapeseed over here as opposed to what we saw over there when we first started grazing this plot. So maybe I should have let it grow a little more before the, putting the chickens on it. It'll be interesting to see if this side over here recovers a little better than that side over there. So would I grow this mix again? Probably so. Is it absolutely perfect for what we're trying to do here? Probably not. Now next year what I may do is try to see if green cover seed will make us a custom mix that's a little more friendly to the chickens as far as what they really like to eat. I know they do that for some other farms, so we'll see if we can make that happen or not. We just need some slight tweaks to this mix. We don't need to change it completely, just some minor modifications. Now diagonal from that overwintering mix, we have this no-till plot with the same exact mix planted. Now we did plant this several weeks ago, dead in the middle of a cold spell, and it took a while for it to germinate. As you can see now, it's popping up good and get some good coverage on the ground there. Now right up until a few days ago, my plan was once they're done on the plot they're on now, I was going to put them on this plot. But seeing what I'm seeing as far as the progression of the growth in that other plot and how I may need to wait and let some of the peas and rapeseed and stuff thrive a little bit more, I don't think I'm going to do that quite yet. I think I'm probably going to run them one more round on the plot they're on and then hopefully this will be big enough to graze. So we'll put them on this after they do one more round on that plot they're on now. Then we have this plot right here, which is our oldest no-till plot. We had some fall taters, fall pumpkins in there. Got the debris raked out of there, got it smoothed over. We planted this just a few days ago, and you can see lots of stuff is already popping in there. Crazy how much faster these cover crops germinate when you have days in the 70s versus when we planted this. Temperatures were in the 50s, and it took a couple weeks to come up. So, a couple weeks versus couple days germination here now on this plot we just planted i did what i like to call my yearly fridge dump so i really don't like to store cover crop seeds for multiple years so what i do every year it's usually on the last cool season cover crop plot that i plant i'll go in my fridge that i have in the barn there where i store excess cover crop seeds just got a lot of little pieces of bags leftover stuff from the previous year and I'll just mix it all together and throw it out here. Now I did have some of that overwintering mix as well that we planted the two plots I showed you before, but we also added some other stuff here. So as I told you, this stuff is planted thick, thick, thick. You can look down there and see just how close everything is. This stuff just popping out of the soil and it already almost looks like a carpet on this no-till plot. So probably a little thicker than most folks would recommend but we're going to get a nice coverage on this plot here and it's a good way to use those old seeds so besides that overwintering mix what i had in the fridge that i added this plot was a little bit of this stuff called nitro tillage radish so like a daikon radish it really kind of aerates the soil had some rutabaga seed about a half pound to a pound we used that in a cover crop mix last year chicken should like that and also had some balanza clover left over so we threw that out here as well and although it's not a perfect test having those additional things added to the overwintering mix here the clover the rutabagas the nitro radish all things the chickens really really love to eat should give us some clues as far as what we want our mix to look like next fall or next winter should tell us what we need to do or how we need to modify this overwintering mix to get some more stuff in there that the chickens really, really like to eat. Now the last plot I want to show you is this big one right here where we planted something similar to that overwintering mix, but this particular mix has a lot more stuff in it. So this one's called the Cool Season Soil Builder Mix. So this is our biggest plot, although we do tend to split it up, kind of cut it in half or thirds, usually plant something different over there compared to what we've had planted over here. We left that pine straw there, kind of planted on top of it, and it's gotten covered up for the most part. Got a little patch, a little bare spot right there, but that's okay. So you can see this cool season soil bitter mix looks a lot like that overwintering mix. Got the grain components in there. 
but in this mix seems like there's a lot more peas in it or at least the peas are thriving a little more in this one we jump in a little closer here we can see a lot of those different components i see some radish in there some tillage radish looks like some flax that i know's in there got some phacelia popping through there so a lot of good diversity in this mix now we've talked a lot about all the great benefits of growing cover crops especially in the cooler months like we're in now one thing i haven't really mentioned a lot is this ancillary benefit of growing cover crops in that it serves as kind of an indicator crop for your soils so we can do a soil test on our soils and it'll tell us you know about some of the micronutrients in the soil some of the secondary nutrients and tell us about phosphorus and potassium but a soil test doesn't really tell us a whole lot about nitrogen but from my experiences a cover crop will tell you a good bit about your nitrogen content in your soil especially in a big plot like this where we've had a lot of different things planted so earlier this year we had this big plot kind of split two-thirds to one-third over here so where you see that line of pine straw was where we kind of had the divider line set over here we had some glass gem corn planted over here we had a bunch of indeterminate tomatoes planted now last winter we had clover over here and we grazed that pretty hard with the chickens a lot of nitrogen was put down over there and it looks like a lot of it's still there even after growing that corn over here we didn't graze with the chickens last year and we had those indeterminate tomatoes in the ground for quite a while for down here and we can see a pretty stark difference between what this looks like and what this over here looks like so while that corn definitely sucked some nutrients out of the soil over there didn't take near the toll that those indeterminate tomatoes did right here so what that tells me is that those indeterminate tomatoes that were planted real deep and had a really massive root system on them really really zapped this spot right here that tells me that i'm going to have to probably do a soil test here check this before i plant any vegetables and probably amend this pretty well to get my nutrient levels back to where they need to be now as gardeners one of the best tools we can use to learn new things and figure out better ways to manage our soil health is our eyes now, i've never really thought of tomatoes as being a super heavy feeding crop i think of corn and onions as really being taxing on the soil but not necessarily tomatoes but this provides some new information for me going forward those indeterminate tomatoes did a number on this spot right here it tells me that in future years i really need to work on you know improving my soil after a tomato grow out before i plant anything else in that spot now as far as the future of this plot goes we could certainly graze this right now everything in there is probably tall enough to graze and would withstand the grazing and grow back but i don't think i'm going to graze this plot with my current chicken tractor it takes a while to cover this big plot even moving those chickens every day a little six by eight footprint takes a long time to cover this large of an area now i don't know when this will happen or if it will ever happen but i've got an idea in my head to add another chicken tractor to do meat burps so it would probably be about the same size as our current chicken tractor maybe just a little bit different design but I think if we had one more chicken tractor full of meat birds, we could really mow down one of these plots right here, add a lot of good nitrogen to our soils. Don't really need any additional egg production. Those six hens give us all the eggs we need. But if we could utilize these cover crops in another way and grow our own meat birds, now that would be something. So I'll be sure to keep you updated if that plan ever develops or as it develops. And let me know in the comments below if there's any of you out there that grow your own meat birds, whether it be in a chicken tractor or in a stationary chicken pen, and kind of what some of your favorite varieties are, how long it takes you to grow them out. Really interested in learning about this process. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. And as always, you can find links to our affiliate partners in the description below. Got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got hats, shirts, garden blog, recipes, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Well, mm -hmm, by the beauty 
of your life 